Pipe Network presents. On this episode of Season 4, Let's Talk. I went to the U.S. with my mom. Ano, namit ko yung asawa ng tita ko who is a retired marine right now. Doon niya tinuro sa akin yung paano ka kumuha ng photos, paano mo, mo ano, gawin yung photo album kung dapat wag mo hawakan lahat yung photo dapat sa side lang ganon and paano mo siya i-arrange then yun dun na lahat ng simula dun ko ano dun ko pa na gustuhan ng photography <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to The Rajiv Show and I'm your host Rajiv Doreswami and this show aims to help reach out to those who are currently struggling in life and to remind you that life is indeed beautiful when you're inspired to make it your own. Before we get into this episode, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to whichever platform you are using. And if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and on TikTok at The Rajiv Show. Hey folks, welcome back to The Rajiv Show and my guest today is an Igorot and we're going to talk about Igorot culture, Igorot life and of course the experiences out of Igorot life and outside of the Igorot life and also some foreign experiences. So my guest I want to introduce today is Vanessa Carantes. Hi Vanessa, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. Awesome, awesome. So, um, before we get into the conversation, could you give a little bit of background about yourself to my listeners? Okay, I am Vanessa Carantes. I am born and raised in Tuba Benguet. So, my father is from Tuba Benguet. Um, is um, pure Ibaloy and uh, Kalinga. And my um, my biological mom died very early, and I was a baby at that, that time, um, due to cancer. So he got married again, and my second mom is from Ikarao, uh, from Bukod. So I my dialect is mix. I can Ibaloy, Ikarao, and a little bit of Kalinga words. I am a HRM graduate. Uh, I studied in University of Baguio, um, and. Uh, my parents um, exposed me to our culture, Ibaloy and Ikarao. Ikarao is uh, very conservative until now and they, they're very concerned regarding their culture and also Ibaloy. So, and I love arts and photography. I studied professional photography last year and in arts, I am self-taught. Um, I was inspired by my teachers in Luwakan Annex, Baguio City National Luwakan Annex, and then um, right now I'm focusing on my arts and I was also inspired with my parents, my aunts, who is more on community service. So we shared our blessing to our community in Tuba, also in Bukod, and different areas of Benguet. I am also a volunteer for uh, Red Cross Benguet chapter. And right now, um, yung kakagawa lang na Bayanihan Cordillera in City Hall, I am one of the volunteers there. My aunt invited me from my father's side. Very well known sila ngayon. And then just recently, I co-founded the Penacha, Penacha organization. My, one of our relatives also pushed me to put up this organization called Penacha. Penacha is in Ikara word. Which means reaching out, and also I work as uh, in cruise ship, so kaya more very active ako ngayon sa community work kasi yung um, due to COVID case ano COVID pandemic, medyo tumut uh, dun ako nakabawi ngayon sa aking mga ano dito sa Philippines sa community work volunteerism chakasap ano ah uh, what do you call this one um on call na chef one of the resort hmm. and that's it <laughs> interesting interesting i love it you you've opened up arts volunteerism 
and those two are rarely combined it is amazing um I, um of course before we get into those conversations art <coughs> volunteerism and the cruise ship experience let's let's take a time ta- uh, time travel back in the past if you and i were classmates in high school uh who were you in high school are you the introverted the sporty type books or you know who were you in high school if you and i were classmates um i am more on on both introvert and sporty type because um sakitin kasi ako no bata ako actually so my parents pushed me to sports um basketball <laughs> and yung more on sa cardio so very introvert din kasi ako tahimik ako sa klase ngayon lang ako siguro medyo maingay <laughs> so um dun nagsimula yung ano yung pinush naman ako nung teacher ko sa arts and sports so, kaya yun <laughs> tahimik ako <laughs> Hindi ako masyadong madaldal nung time na yun. Ngayon lang. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. And um, w- uh, when when you do sports, I wanted to ask, do, does the competitiveness happen? Do you have that competitive nature when it comes to being a sports person you you, you mentioned? Oo oh, naman. Kailangan na, no? Kaya ko to. Kung kaya, very, ano, talagang tao gito uh, yung ganon competitive tayong talaga yung gagawin ko talaga para manalo kami kasi ang yeah. as a team leader kailangan namin manalo di ba kailangan kung tulungan kami as a team we work as a whole kaya um, talagang babantay namin yung igagard namin yung area namin ganon ang ginagawa ko we never give up talagang kung nag kung isa hindi niya nakaya tutulungan namin para maging strong isang team as uh, sabi a very competitive ano team yung kami hindi lang ako as a whole inang yun inang sa tingin ko na gustuhan naman nila sa akin we never give up kahit last minute talagang hmm. gagawin namin ano <laughs> wow that's that's interesting Uh, I want to connect that question back and I'll get that question back later. I, I have a question in my mind, but I'll add that later. You mentioned that um, you mentioned that you are you you studied HRM. Uh, and um, was that like a passion was that a passion for you or was it just something to get your life passed through college? Or was it something that you had to pursue in order um, to pursue something else? No, actually, it's my my sister, my my dad, my parents, um, the one who enrolled me in HRM. Actually, I want to take fine arts, pero ayo ng dad ko. Kaya <laughs> uh, Pero I really love cooking. Um, my professional is um, pastry. I am professional pastry chef. I studied in US. Pina enroll ako ng parents ko sa isang ano um, institution don. Hmm. Uh, it's called Gormandis Gormandis School. Pero maganda rin ang HRM pero talagang pinaka gusto ko yung passion ko is arts. I don't know why. Basta <laughs> arts lang. Interesting. I really want to open into the art conversation because uh, for those who are tuning in and those who know me very well, I am an obsessive when it comes to arts. I love um, I grew up in the comics side of things. So uh, when it comes to arts, you mentioned photography. What uh, what type yes. of uh, photography do you pursue in in the niche uh, side of things? Uh, as a traveler, um, I love all sigo ano, yung landscape, but I all, um, right now I'm focusing on portraits. I, I love expression. Because um, uh, hindi naman ako nag-aral ng proper ano arts um like painting, mm. but when I take photos, I gusto ko yung makita ng emotions because when it comes to emotions, dun mo talaga makikita yung yung how people love you, how do they care like that, um yung yung kung paano nila yung sa hands, sa eyes, 
yun ang gusto ko. Also, yung, like, also, I'm obsessed also with um, street photography. Kasi, mm. when you take photos in street photography, there's a lot of different kinds of emotions happening. Like, also in landscape, sunset, sunrise, or anything. Mm. Makikita mo doon how um, environment is, kung gaano kaganda yung environment. Kasi I am also a one of um what do you call this one team leader of climate reality, mm. which is also a very well known um organization worldwide mm. as a team leader of a. Uh, ko nakikita yung passion ko regarding arts, different colors, different emotions, portraits po ako sa and also landscaping, street photography yon. Could you take us back to to the time when you discovered photography? What was the story? Uh, you know, take us back to the genesis of how you discovered photography. What's the story there? <laughs> okay. Um, a very very young age ako kasi noon. Um, my dad yeah, traveled all the time, so I can see the different ano culture, different people, different places. So my my mom and dad always bring with them the camera. Then huh. when I went to the US with my mom ano namit ko yung asawa ng tita ko who is a retired marine right now doon niya tinuro sa akin yung paano ka kumuha ng photos paano mo, mo ano gawin yung photo album kung dapat wag mo hawakan lahat yung photo <laughs> dapat sa side lang ganun and mm. paano mo siya i-arrange then yun doon na lahat nagsimula doon ko ano doon ko pa, na gustuhan ng photography <laughs> Yung, yung tanong, dagdag na tanong dito, is that ko, nung, nung time mo na, nag, na nag, nagpo-photograph ka, meron ka bang na-discover na, or did you discover a particular style when you do your photography? Yes. Uh, ang gusto ko talaga yung ginagamit until right now is the manual, the old one, the film. Hmm. Kasi yung digital, kasi sa akin na, I learned mm. this from also from the master class. Um, mm. If you know the master class, um, also very known photographer, nakalimutan ko yung pangalan niya. Difference digital kasi, you can edit. But the time yung film, mm. mas set mo na yung gusto mong mga F, F points or whatever. Mm. Pag yun, dun mo makikita kung how good at you the photography and nag, meron ako yung mga time na inaantay kung tsaka yung mga emotions na gusto kong kunin na kagaya nung sa what happened in Otogon uh. Uh, yung landslide may nakuha din ako photo doon na yung mga pulis na kumakain and the rescue team which is the photo na I really love it's only one shot lang oh, and yun yung mga timing lang siguro <laughs> may inaantay lang kung timing kung paano kukunin lahat ng ano yung Kasi, photo. one thing that I learned from photography is, uh, meron ata itong, uh, there's this image that uh, I think everybody knows mm. um, where the, this, uh, it, was in, it, it was in Facebook and Instagram where this person waited for a hundred hours to catch, alam mo ba yun? Yun, yung, yung photo na yun? Uh, a bird diving into into the ocean or I, I forgot what photo, yes. uh, what photo that is but the photographer who was waiting for a hundred hours just to get that uh, amazing shot that <laughs> have you tried that by any chance <laughs> with uh, this thing portrait <laughs> yes talagang dun sa portrait minsan yung kinukuha ko yung hindi sila nagpo-post yung candid huh? lang eh, huh? yun ang mas gusto ko kasi when they post ayaw na ayaw ko kasi <laughs> yes. yun ang sa akin Aside from... They want the, just them to move. Ah. <laughs> ah, okay. Aside from portrait photography, is there any other particular um, particular type of art aside from photography that you've experimented with? Ah, yes. I'm doing you know, art painting. Hmm. I started at a very young age. Um, acrylic, acrylic, acrylic? Acrylic painting. Wow. Yes. Pero ngayon, pina- acrylic and oil actually. Yung pinaka-first ko talaga oil. Mm. Ngayon, nag-acrylic ako. 
what's the experience yeah. tell us take us to the story i really want to know kasi sa akin personally i want to share some few stuff when when you cre- when you find art uh this is one personal story that i think is is a part of an artist's life you know musician or an artist in general is that you build a relationship with with your art and i don't know if you agree with me though yeah. is that when yes. when you start creating something that means value to you it's it's like a relationship thing it, it, it grows there are certain days that you break up okay it doesn't work today so you break up and then you will come back into the relationship and parang ganun din yung relasyon ko ng arts ko nung nung I was in my lost years and it is funny <laughs> coming to think of it uh, that uh yeah the, the art is a huge part of relationship and um take us back to the genesis of when you discovered arts in general not just photography photography you've already mentioned okay um started when no my sister ano my sister is an engineer so tinuruan niya ako sa paint by battle paint by, nagsimula sa paint by battle by ano acrylic then my mom bought me ano yung paint by number that was long long time ago siguro 1990s pa yon and then i was very young tapos yun i started painting i have no proper education in arts ay yung painting except yeah. for the pho- photography oh. Yon, ang ginagawa na lang ako. I started with abstract, abstract painting, kasi yun, I can bring my emotions through abstract painting hmm. because um, yung binubuli nila ako. You're not a good painter like that. Eh. You're yeah. not ano yung mga some of the people. And then eh, wala, gino pinos ko na lang sa painting. Yeah. Then yun nakagawa ko ng paint ko na isa, which an abstract. Sabi nung advisor ko who is yeah. a very an um a teacher in City High right now. Oh. And then yun na na nag-stop na naman ako <laughs> say yun parang break na naman kayo tapos babalik na naman. Yeah. Uh pinush niya ako sa um charcoal. Mm. Gumawa Uy, ako charcoal. Portrait, portrait. That's mahirap yes. yan eh. Very hard. You have to yes. blurry and yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect. May dapat yung shading. <laughs> yeah. Then yon. Um, natapos ko yung portrait ng grandma ko who died like last year. Mm. Yun. It's a charcoal and oil paint. I acrylic painting. Mm. Then yon. Right now, I, I was inspired by some artists. A uh, singer abroad. I did a portrait of her. Mm. She's a well-known country singer, which she appreciated. Mm. And then ngayon, dumadami sila ng dumadami. Hindi naman ganun kadami. Then sumunod um with um this um singer also an actress who supported me to do a portrait of her mom. Oh. Which also that motivated me. Now, uh, with you um when you do something, we do it with your best and with passion. So, yeah. yun ang napanood na, ko na interview niya. So, yun ang naging motivation ko to push my arts and also um uh, well known politics so i'm right now and my project right now is a portrait of her it's, an, it's actually miss helen wow. gamboa soto um yeah <laughs> yun um wait uh, tanong lang progress ko tanong lang follow up yes. tanong doon sa, sa sa portraits uh, art portraits the stuff that you're doing you mentioned charcoal are you still uh, when you do portrait uh, a p- p- person's portrait what technique do you use charcoal acrylic which one do you use uh, I, when it comes to char um, portraits mm. ginagawa ko muna yung mukha nila with charcoal and the uh, background of it it's an acrylic it depends on my mood <laughs> ah. ang, ina, ano po. but right now i'm doing um, a portrait of miss helen gamboa soto yeah. Uh, which her daughter allowed me to do, which yeah. is Shara Soto, a portrait of her mom. Also, an ac- ano, acrylic painting naman yung actual ano, niya, photo niya. Wow. So, it takes time. Yeah. So, maya hindi ka na naman sa mood. Ba maya yeah. babalikan mo, few days yeah. after. Matatapos mo na lang. <laughs> Ganon. Yeah. So, that started everything. And then, yung... 
nala medyo kasi meron yung gumausap sa akin say how did you become an artist sabi niya sa mm. akin your dad is not an artist sabi niya mm. sa akin so i just ano shut up and tumahimik na lang ako so <laughs> and then the part yeah. um senator Lauren Ligarda said if um someone bullied you then take this as a challenge to ano to do better and then let them talk do what you love and do it with passion sabi niya ganun so doon na nagboost yung motivation ko to hmm. push my arts interesting interesting speaking of philosophy um Uh, one thing uh, before before I actually talk about philosophy, you mentioned abstract. When when you started abstract, yeah. what is what your style? Because I I've experimented with abstract as well, and uh, Jackson Pollock is the one that I think of, or Cubism, uh, Picasso, uh, you know Cubism. Uh, when when you started out, yeah. um, when you started out with abstract, which which style did you go for? Cubism, pointillism, what ism art style did you try? Um, I don't know, cause I don't have a, like I said, I don't have a proper education with mm. regarding that. And I mean, so, I mean, when you when you start painting, when you start creating, do you you just you just uh, you just throw the brush like what's the style there like in the earlier times, abstract? What's the abstract? Because, uh. uh One thing I know about Jackson Pollock is if if you 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 you've seen ja- Jackson Pollock Jackson Pollock's work is tinatapon niya lang or he just throws the paint on the on the canvas so the canvas is on the floor and then he throws it on on the floor and um, he allows the paint to just go into a particular direction but his he has a particular uh, style you know he goes I don't know what's his technique his actual signature technique But he just throws the paint on the floor, and the final product is yun. Yung parang natapon ng kape, <laughs> parang natapon na kape dun sa. You know, it, that, that's basically not just like only one coffee drop on the floor. It's like thousands of that in one canvas. So that's his style. And then uh, one thing I know about Cubism, Pablo Picasso. When it comes to Cubism, uh, we take human form, de right? We have our human body. And we have other forms of realisms, and what I know in Cubism is we take those our form, our human form, and we distort it in such a way that the chest is square or the eyes are square and everything is square. Basically, that's the idea. That's why it's called cube, cubism. That's why is every idea is blocky and, it, but it it also is abstract. So when it comes to your your style, like. Where did you? What? What? What was the first thing when you you expressed and you you know painted a painted on a canvas? What was your uh, expression? No, well, when I start, um, there's one this um project that I made for my cousin. Um, also abstract. I guess that's um George Ping, George, George. How do you pronounce this? Brake? I don't know. I don't go binace. Um, it's an eye. This I drew. I just drew the ano, parang tau gitu. Uh, put the paint, uh. and I just put some form like square, and then just to perfect the eye. Uh. So that's I just drew the paint and then fix it, whatever form like rectangle, uh. square, and then you know, pinaka first na naging project ko na hindi na bumalik <laughs> kinuha yeah. ng teacher <laughs> like an, an uh, eye of a woman then I put different uh, different colors and I just square and form it a uh, cubes oh so basically it, you cubism. started and the, cubism yeah yeah Brake, what yes. was the name of and the then, art Brake and a uh, George George Brake that's it and dun ko binis yung ano yung yung first naging project ko mm. parang ina ano binis ko dun sa nude descending nila ng woman woman mm. ba yun naka nude sila lahat pero ang kinuha ko lang na naging inspiration ko yung eye one eye uh, what what's the title what's the yung, title of the thing 
Ah, nude descending, staircase number two. Nude descending. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, wow. We, <laughs> right off the bat, we could actually relate. Nakarelate na rin pala tayo dun sa arts and stuff. Uh, some few personal stories between me and my relationship since you shared uh, as well. Um, I love art. The, the the funny story that I I remember with with my life and my experience with art is that um, it's 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 been a long experience. Uh, my, my dad used to mention this when I was young that uh, I used to wake up and then I don't even wa- wash my face and brush my teeth. And the time when I was like around five years old or something, I used to just go pick up bond paper at that time I, I used to draw on bond paper so uh, I used to find bond paper in the house and then I just start drawing and um, once I started getting serious into the stuff uh, uh, I the last I remember was uh, the hindi ko alam kung na, na, na try mo din to is the when you used to put a coin behind the paper and then you shade it yeah yeah. <laughs> that was that was the experience the, the most interesting experience that I had when when I did that I did not know that it was possible to actually do that and then my fascination for the love of art continued from there and then uh, of course I think when the time I grew up um, we the, the whole Cartoon Network the the good stuff from Cartoon Network you know got Ghostbusters and all these other cartoons. Na effect ako na affected ako dun kasi I, I like how they use the artistry there. And then I, I decided okay, let me try doing comics. And uh, my my style back then was not even a style. I used to draw the stick figures, you know, the stick figures that everybody can draw. <laughs> uh, because I cannot uh, really study and anim- uh, it's very hard to do proportions and body structure is very very hard and it's very challenging so for me I kind of figured out and then I was influenced by a classmate of mine who I really respect and I admire and then one thing led to the other the release of the Spider-Man movies and then the Marvel movies and all that stuff I began trying to improve but then I had like like you I had the same experience you know uh, I was never taught and uh, uh, during the last years, of course, which I, I, I think I mentioned a hundred times, is that uh, it was the most creative period and most productive period of my life. But it was the most depressing part because I was on my own. So the only relationship that I had mm-hmm. is me and my comics, you know. And it was just that um, uh, I, I studied, I studied characters, I studied uh, singing, and I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, <laughs> stuff but yeah uh, that was the experience that was the on and off relationships there were like like uh, mentioned those on and off relationships that I had <laughs> with with art there were days that I threw my books away and then the next I balik na ulit tayo it's kind of thing it's an up and down relationship Aww. so yeah that is one thing that I still I still do have like that obsessive ah yeah speaking of uh, obsessive perfectionistic when when it comes to pieces that you do by the way p- photography acrylic painting this i don't know if you've been asked this question do you ever feel that once you're done with a p- piece let's say you've done a 5 hour piece or 6 hour piece do you ever feel that you're done with the piece medyo medyo malalim to medyo philosophical to eh um, no sa akin kasi <laughs> Kaila, you, ikaw ba yung when you so um, when you're making a uh, piece, gusto mo talaga maging perfect. Like that's I'm so obsessive being perfect with my piece, and then I have to start over and over and over again. It happens to me a lot of times when it comes huh. to portraits, yeah. most especially dun sa when it comes to charcoal pag nagkamilik ka don. Hindi mo ma erase yun eh. <laughs> yeah. Hindi mo ma erase, so I need to start over again. So that's what I really hate with me being uh. so perfect with my piece. So, so my 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 advisor with my art. So uh. no one is perfect when it comes to art. Sabi niya sa akin, just leave it uh. there. But 
that, that's why we called it an art. So, yeah, sa akin. Okay. So, <laughs> yun ang ano nangyayari sa akin kasi I have to start over again. Like, it happens with me a lot of times yeah. and I really hate it. Speaking so of perfect with my pizza. <laughs> speaking of uh, perfectionism, it to uh, to to me personally uh it's kind of I I, I want to b- b- before I talk about myself, of course. I want to uh, I want to ask the does the sense of perfectionism that you have for your art and your craft or whatever it is that you're doing like your discipline do does your discipline in perfectionism in art spill to your personal life you know like when you do um, certain no. things um. like uh, let's say uh, for me this is one thing that I share when I do stuff that I create let's say Uh, I create a podcast or I create something, I, sh- I create a quotation. I think I've shared this also before, is that um, when I create a post, I have the habit of missing out a particular, especially in English. It's funny. <laughs> the funny is funny that I speak English, but I do not know how to write well. You know, I do not know how to write English grammar properly. So there are certain Facebook posts that I create, especially my social media, where If in case I miss a comma or a bracket, I delete that thing five minutes prior to its release, and then I have to redo it. And then that that's like my discipline. And the same thing goes for music. Music is even worse, to be honest, when it comes to me sitting down and writing music. Um, I am so obsessed in finding a perfect sound without even starting. It's very funny. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's why I want to ask you. Do you have like that discipline? Like you know, okay, I want to be perfectionist. Naghugas lang, even the simple things like naghugas lang ng pinggan or washing up uh, a plate. Do you have that need that you have to scrub it like parang OCD <laughs> kind of thing? Yeah, uh, yes. Um, with with me as akin you with my pastries and cakes and uh. also posting. But when it comes to posting. I needed to be checked some with my friends and uh. some with my relatives. But yung pagka OCD ko sa for the food as uh. a what do you call this as, as a pastry chef. Yeah. When I'm doing my training, my yeah. cakes, so I need to be per- perfect and then my my trainer told me that you don't need to be have perfect in with cups to cakes. Sabi sa akin, <laughs> okay, you just leave it right there, okay? We will just uh, make some designs. Also, with my graphic designs, because uh. I also I just graduated with my training with my graphic designs. I, I uh. need to be perfect with yeah. the words, with the thing. You know, pinaka hate ko talaga. Pero yung with my post, with yeah. my Facebook or Instagram, eh, my friend will send message. You forgot this comma. You forgot yeah. this word. Okay. <laughs> so it's the same. So you agree? <laughs> Perfectionism is life. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag yes. perfectionism is life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, pinakahit ko naman. <laughs> And uh, one thing I gotta ask though, na, I wanna, before we get into the break, I actually wanna ask a very, very deep philosophical question. In in all your experiences, you mentioned you've experienced art in the age of, uh, in the young, in such a young age. And till, till today, it's, it's It's funny that in a pandemic, prior to the recording of this conversation, you've you know created um, you've created art countless of times. Is there a particular philosophy that you live by, like a Vanessa Carantes quote that you know when you wake up, I need to say this to myself to convince myself, okay, I need to get to work uh, or something, or before you even get to work, like is there a particular quote that you tell yourself? Uh, that i need to, uh, something something that motivates you fires you up or a memory that you know that fi- that reminds you every time you want to give up this this memory will come back in your head and say you started this for a reason is there a particular quotation or something that you you have that gets you fired up aba nung tanong ah yeah um <laughs> yeah um one of the, i have this quote that i uh, to the uh, no sa um i heard this one from the peop- one of the person i admire also, actually there are two uh, dalawa sila um one is with this a very known country singer as an igoroto who really loves country right <laughs> um 
her name is um Reba McIntyre and then I had I heard this podcast of her that um to thine own self be true which is by Hamlet if you know the if hmm. you know Hamlet yeah the play yes um the play meron sila yung verse nila na to thine to thine own self be true meaning better um what the, you what's done is done just leave it right there so every time i wake up so okay kung anong nagawa mo kahapon tapos na yun so you have to be just move on you just be true to yourself you if you uh, make mistake okay if not then just say say sorry because no one is perfect and yung kay miss ano right helen gomboa so to that when i wake up okay uh, life is too short so everything what i do right now is i i will do it with my best and do it with my passion because if we don't know we don't know if we ano buka buka so wala na hmm. o may nagawa tayong masama so we just always, always forgive and do the best we have every day in lang hmm. those are the people whom i admired and motiv- motivated me all the time since uh, i lost my um, both of my bio- biological parents uh, yun ang nakikita ko sa kanila the people who I look up it to yun ang word na the thine own self be true and everything you do it with passion and do your best yun lang <laughs> wow very powerful <laughs> it's very powerful that we're yeah. ending the f- uh, first half with a positive positive note folks for those who are tuning in we're just gonna have a short break and we will be right back right after this do you want to get great deals go to pipe marketplace visit pipenetwork.co slash marketplace and use the promo code trs to get exclusive discounts chat with them now bust the podcast pipe yan hey man here are you an adult Okay, how about a growing adult? It's a kid or a kid at heart that is open to learning and change. If that's you, then check out Mabuhay Maxima on Spotify and other podcast platforms. See you there. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show. And we had an amazing creative productive uh, insight to a fellow artist, Vanessa Carantes. And we were talking about arts in the first half. If you haven't, check it out. And now we're going to talk about... Um, cruise ship i really want to talk about this what's the experience of being in a cruise ship uh and the foreign lifestyle like uh i do not know which one to start off with uh i think i'll start uh, off with the foreign na lang, with the foreign because the foreign is much more shorter than mahabang cruise ship experience eh. i have a feeling there's a very very long story there so uh you mentioned that you're a traveler you've traveled and um uh what was the what was the experience crossing from uh from one country to the other okay i started traveler when traveling actually when i was 18 mm-hmm. a few months after my birthday my mom and a book a tour uh called pilgrimage <laughs> pilgrimage tour the actually mga church mga ganyan. so i'm with the uh, mga lola and uh, auntie and I am most the youngest at the time. Yeah. Lahat sila matatano. Hindi naman sila matatanda. Mga middle age that time. Yeah. Uh, so, yun ang naging first experience ko. So, yung tour namin na yun is from Mexico, we were going to the US to visit my aunt. So, nag over kami sa China. China. China, I think, that time. So, very hard to talk with the Chinese people because some some most of them don't know how to speak mm. English mm. so sign language sign language e, yung yung time na yon may kailangan namin lumipat sa isang airplane so talaga yung luggage namin ang pinakamahirap walang tumutulong luckily there are Filipino Americans mm. na tumulong sa amin that time <laughs> so, uh, that's the worst experience namin when it comes to sa China then to sa Mexico um I enjoyed kasi nakita ko yung different cultures na medyo ay kawig natin mga Filipino they're very welcoming uh, yung tour guide namin mabait so very blessed kami ng time na yun meron din yung experience namin na masungit yung 
mga kasama naming mga ibang foreign people and i have this one experience at the cruise ship that uh, natsambahan ko yung officer na usungit ay talagang sinabi niya sa akin you have to clean my room from top to bottom to the side so naiiyak ako doon <laughs> kailangan ko mag simula ulit then so it could, I may stain yung aking bed sheet sabi niya sa akin then I check it ah god sabi ko yung isang dat lang ng ballpen na kala niya siguro men so kailangan ko talaga ulitin yung bed sheet start over eh, Wait, ang this is in Mexico ko, but no in the may work in the cruise ship but in ah, Mexico okay. Okay. enjoyed they're very ano naman yung caring and then when yung may pinuntahan kaming museum mummified museum mummy museum wow I, my mom has no idea akala siguro yung museum lang na yung kagaya sa atin eh yeah mostly na yung mga kasama ko dun middle age and we entered oh hanggang paglabas namin talagang mummified yung nakita namin dun wow and said na oh my god worst experience sabi ng iba pero ako eh siyempre bagets yeah. ko naman ako noon hindi <laughs> like enjoy ako nakita ko yung mga mommy fight no <laughs> isn't the, na, nag, nag, didn't we have a culture uh did we have a culture I, I, it's not ours i think it's it's i think the mountain province culture the mommy fight tomb or it, it's somewhat ibaloy or mountain re- region back then that we yes. didn't have uh, saying we didn't have graves so so in order to to bury the dead we either le- we left them in caves and yes uh, it, it's a it's a, tra- all, a tradition by the mountains in, yeah i yeah. do not know if it's ibaloy we though in, ano, yeah in kabayan in ah kabayan, kabayan correct and yeah. Yes, and then my mom told me also they have also in Bukod, oh. pero hindi ko lang alam kung saan part. Oh. Also in Tuba, um, they have also that and cave kasi eh pero kasi yeah. ang Tuba, medyo hindi pa sila open sa ibang tourism yeah. sa er- ibang areas ng ano Tuba, um, pili lang siguro few, but in Bukod they have one. Sabi sa akin ng mom ko, pero hindi kasi namin mahanap yung photo. Oh. But sa kabayan meron sila. So, at least we It's there are, there are some amazing experiences and some few lovely memories to share when you're traveling. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we spoke about the air. <laughs> we you you said that you had the experience in the air. Now let's take it into the seas. You said cruise ship. Uh, I actually wanted to go from sea to air, but I want to take Sky High Mona before I go down to the waters. What was the story there? W- what happened? How did you? Pano ka napad pad don? What what brought you to the uh, <laughs> to to the ocean? What made you fall in love with the ocean? Because uh, I know um, most of the time I'm on the land, and then hmm. said my my best friend. Who work? Who is working right now in Jani? Told mm. me, okay, let's apply. Uh, let's train in uh, as a seafarer. Sabi niya sa akin, okay, okay. And then, ako lang yung nakatapos nung training kasi siya nagabro na land land base. And then, okay, where you go? Where you don't try? Sabi niya sa akin, pag na try mo, susunod mm. ako. And hindi siya pumunta. And then I tried. Uh-huh. Then nandun na ako sa cruise ship. Uh, Before we entered the cruise ship, yung iba nakakapagres sila sa hotel, yeah. pero yung iba hindi. But I got lucky, nakapag nakapagres ako don. Yeah. So when you enter na don, work ka na, nagu work ka na don. Wala ka ng ano, wala ka ng day off. We only have work off, uh, hours lang. Yeah. Yung sleep lang. Man. You work 12 hours, 13 hours, ganon. But in embarkation, disembarkation, huh. you're lucky if you're on night shift. Kasi, dire-direcho na yan hanggang umaga. Pag naka-out ka, natulog ka na. Eh, pero pag day shift, kawawa. Yeah, because... Lang, yeah. Bro, can you sleep mo? And the body is... Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. 
And when you said ship, because this is the the thing that hits me in the head. When you said cruise ship experience, yeah. I, immediately I thought of Titanic. <laughs> I've never, I for me personally, I've had the experience of going, uh, of traveling on air. You know, I I, I traveled with mm-hmm. when I went from from the Philippines from here from La Trinidad to uh, from Manila to India via Malaysian Airlines. I had the experience of traveling on air. So I, I kind of know the feeling, you know, you travel, it's like hours. You, sometimes you don't even know, like you're already there. Tapos you, uh, you you just don't know. It's like your five hours are like just like that. I got to ask though, how many hours does it take from one place, from getting from one place to the other? I, it, um, and what is the longest, if you still remember like a particular cruise ship experience that you've had, what is the longest travel from where to where? Um, yung ano, seven days cruise. But for some, weeks. Mm. Uh, there are 14 days cruise. There are like a month. Well, there for, meron din iba month. But for us, as a crew, or an um, officer sa iba, mm. um, pinakamahirap sa amin yung at sea. From yung three days at sea lang namin, it's a uh, oh ang hirap kasi yung guys hindi lumalabas nandun lang sila sa loob ng ship. Uh, we need to clean, we need to make up some room. Eh, iba ayaw nilang lumabas ng room, so problema namin yan. May iba turn down ganon. So yung nung experience na mahirap pag nasa sea ka yung travel three days, four days at sea. Pag nandun lang sila sa land. Hmm. Ayan, masaya na kami <laughs> kasi we can work properly. <laughs> kasi ang hirap talaga kasi yung, yung iba may sisig. Yeah. yeah. You have to clean that yung yung ano nila, yung yung dumi nila. Hmm. Yun ang pinakamahirap din sa amin as ano crew ng sh- ano ng ship na yon. 3 days ang pinakamahirap sa amin yung at sea. Yeah. When you at sea Hindi Are na, you yeah, good tanong luck. lang? Tanong lang. Are you obliged to s- oh. tell the particular destination of I I don't know if it's privacy or it's company policy. Are you obliged to share the information of your first your your best ever experience on the cruise? Yes, kasi na share ko na rin to sa iba. Uh, this, um like from where uh, to where? I, can, I don't know. Uh, where to where? Yung kung sa yung destination. Yeah. Um. Yes. Um. Yung yung sa amin kasi is in. Yung cruise ship na nasampahan ko is um Caribbean. Uh. So beach. Then where ano yun? Depende yan sa season. Yeah. Pag ano na yung kagaya ng. Sumampa ako don ng mga July so summer doon sa kanila. July hanggang iba September mm. Caribbean mm. then November to mga December na yan or January sa ano na kami Canada so pinaka worst na ano ko experience namin is Caribbean because yung rough sea going home to New York yun oh. na pinaka grabe wait yung from Pacific Canada Ocean. to New York no um, from Caribbean to New York Oh yeah, so you have to pass by. Ah, yeah, correct. You have to pass by the Pacific Ocean. That's the longest. Yeah, wow. Three days. Wait, that means if you're traveling from uh, Pacific Ocean from Caribbean, aren't you going down to South America muna? Tapos tataas kayo. Ah, uh, dep- cakap depend rin sa minsan sa captain, kasi yung route, yung meron yung snowstorm, yung mga hmm. yun, ba? Hmm. Pacific Ocean, di ba, ang prone sa mga storm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, in the Philippines, yeah, that's true. I actually agree because in the Philippines, mostly an experience of the 2020 experience that we had is we had typhoons. So, for those who are tuning in, most likely some of us have gone through. I've had experience with typhoons and most likely it's a, it's a crazy thing. And being in the ocean one way or the other, there is no safe zone. Once you get hit by one of those, hurricane typhoons you have to figure out how to 
find wow, that's an experience crazy experience months from caribbean to new york that's tiring <laughs> that is yes. uh, kung naalala mo yung ano yung storm sa puerto rico uh nadudoon kami that time puerto rico is this the haiti uh, thing on 2011 or something no it's like around ano ngayon, 20, mga 2018 as ah, recent when they oh. hit ano yeah oh. yung storm oh. most Man, of the, that, that time di ba ang nahihit is the caribbean area the yeah yeah so Man, we're lucky na no naghit na yung storm wala kami doon <laughs> nakaalis na wow Man, that's an amazing, amazing. At least that's something that you can keep till till you grow old. You know, you know. Back in my day, we went yes. to the cruise ship. <laughs> that's amazing. Yes. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. Wow. We transitioned from arts to airplanes to ship experience. Now, to end the conversation, to wrap this conversation up, of course. You mentioned volunteerism. Um, everything in life revolves around the idea that whatever you give, whatever you get, you give back, and that's uh, the, that's one thing that uh, is also part of uh, life. I mean, yeah. And as a podcaster, we 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 share not just information. We we, we just don't give information. We provide value and. Uh, a volunteer, volunteer our voices to share and inspire others. Um, what is the most amazing feeling that you've ever done with volunteerism? And when did the project start it? The volunteerism uh, uh, passion. The projects, yeah, yes. Um, yung pagka volunteerism ko, I was inspired by my my mom and dad, hmm. uh, and my aunt who is um in US. Hmm. And oh, basically, it's my parents. Um, I'm parents and relatives, my aunts. Because um, at a very young age, sabi ko nga, I lost my biological parents very early. My dad died when I was 18. But biological mom died when I was baby, like two years old. So hmm. growing up, I saw my dad yung we ano start kami ng wala nothing. Hmm. So from back to the beginning, and when he got married, then sa mom ko right now, and I inspired ako. Eh, sure, nag start kami sa wala, and now na medyo may kaya kami, and hmm. also my aunt, who is who help us to do this um giving school supplies at the yung sa school na walang wala like in sagit lang. That was their first project, hmm. giving books. Because my dad remember na walang wala silang sleepers, wala mm. silang backpack. They have to walk mountains mm. before they can go to school. So that started everything. That what we have right now, that we have to share. Like this, um, one quotation that in uh, ad, ad, I admire is, "Make sure you always give. Make sure you always give and what more than you are taking because." You cannot have naman this one if you ano hindi ka tinulungan din ng iba hindi ka humingi ng tulong sa ibang tao so you have to give back kahit malit lang give back mm. so yun nag dun ako nagsimula lahat and then din, yung tinuro ng parents ko ng aunt ko yun din ang ginagawa ko ngayon what i have like my time right now like i'm not doing a lot i have to do like parang nag volunteer akong sa 143 because Penga chapter which started like 2017 my mom is a board of director so you mm. do you want uh, to do volunteerism you're, when you're here yeah sige mm. so nagpapak kami ng relief then go to different areas of Benguet na wala silang ano and then yung bayanihan cordillera mm. as uh, like a chef uh, tumutulong naman ako doon nagluluto nung covid time mas lalo ng ECQ Hmm. Yun lang naman ang may bibigay ko. And then right now yung sa ano, community service din most of all yung sa school education. Yun lang. Kung anong alam ko, yun din ang may share ko sa kanila. 
Because dun lang naman ako na inspired by my mom and the people who I admire. That make sure you always give back. Because you don't know when you're gone. At least yun lang may may bibigay mo lesson din sa kanila. <laughs> wow, that's 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 power. More power to you. I mean, there yes. I I I do agree to to a certain degree that sometimes, especially in times like this. Um, there are a lot of um, a lot of people who 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 showed their true. This, this is a conversation that I had with a friend of mine, who who felt bad that uh, unfortunately, uh, with when the pandemic happened, you know uh, things were rough. You know things were thing, and then it showed the true colors of people who spoke a lot and then did a lot and. I gotta say, uh, more power to you. Uh, keep doing, keep doing the good stuff. I mean, more power to you. In, in not just in the sense of volunteerism. More power to you in arts and doing what you love. Because uh, you know, like you said, in the end of the day, you know, you may never know when you're gonna go. And then, yeah, wow. This this has been an amazing, yeah. <laughs> amazing conversation. And I kind, I love this conversation. This really. From the bottom of my heart, I uh, I love this conversation, and uh, I wish hopefully uh, somewhere down the line you'd come back to the Rajiv show and share some more of your stories. If you if you picked up a, uh, yeah. some few more, <laughs> I'd love to have you back on the Rajiv show. Yeah, but I'm so lucky nga ikta, kasi ano <laughs> invite mo ako. Actually, nahiya kasi talaga ako. This is my first um, sharing actually. <laughs> And I'm so lucky na napili mo naman ako na interview. <laughs> I, I, Thank you in, very much, actually. In, in the regards of, on behalf of my show, and of course, uh, on behalf of me as a person, um, the pandemic has done a lot of damage to a lot of people. Not just me. Uh, uh, not just me in, in terms of what went through. And to, to those who are tuning in, the recording of this conversation is during the Christmas of this pandemic. So this is a pandemic Christmas uh, recording. Uh, and uh, it, the pandemic really took a toll on me mentally, physically, to the point that I had to find a way to reinvent the wheel. So, uh, of course, uh, as a fresh graduate from music and everything, I wanted to do something else that... Um, that I, I could feel more alive. And when the po- uh, podcast began, you know, things started, you know, things started moving, things. And then the podcast grew and then here we are. I, it's a huge honor for me to have all of you guys from 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 guest number one till, you know, guest number 47, I guess. Uh, it, it's a huge honor for, for me to have you guys a part of my show because one thing is, to me, personally, I believe that a conversation can save lives and i think we need yeah. more of conversations in, in this 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 world because if we don't have those conversations you know we may never know what's on the other side of the wall or what's in the other side of the window because we speculate too much we are in the world of speculation we believe that we saw something on social media and then without context we take it as a negative sense and it's very bad that that's one thing sad about social media but at least with the idea of having a conversation having a one-on-one conversation having this conversation between you and me we are building something that is worth understanding you understand me i understand you and the conversation the communication is clear even though we don't understand each other and then we come to a conclusion that we, we, we have a certain middle ground where we can conversate that is that is in itself is the main goal of the let's talk series a conversation that can lead to inspiration to for a thousand generations <laughs> it, it i kind of made it rhyme <laughs> conversation conversation and then generation but yeah that's the main idea and, and i'm glad at least uh, you you accepted my conversation uh, this this invitation wow ang daming rhyme conversation invitation wow <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm babbling on too much. Uh, to wrap up, of course, this conversation again, <laughs> uh, I'm sure my listeners out there would love to connect with you via social media. How will they find you in social media? 
uh, I have this um I'm more on Instagram actually um my Facebook is more on personal but you admit there I'm Vanessa Carantes also I have an Instagram it's Van Candid for my photography and then for my graphic design is my VCC Carantes but okay, you can choose whatever you want <laughs> so but more often I'm on my Instagram Van Candid you can see my artworks there and photography awesome awesome wow yeah. it has been a creative productive life changing experience to actually learn the experience of being in a cruise ship this this is really the most fun conversation that i've ever had uh, i want to thank my guest vanessa carantes for being a part of the rajiv show and um, thank you so much yeah. for having this conversation with me spending the time to have a conversation with me yeah thank you very much also just um do whatever you want to do it's worth the thing all the way so you it's your choice so you have to live with it and you, i know that you will be so um, successful with your show <laughs> thank you very much Thank you, thank you so much for the kind, loving words. I, I wish, I, I wish if the whole social distancing was not a thing, I would live, give you a virtual hug. I'm sending virtual love to, to, to my guest. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. It's, it's I, I'm a loving thank guy, you. so I always love to send love, especially Christmas, <laughs> prior to this recording. So Christmas <laughs> love, and for those who are tuning in, I hope you've learned a thing or two in this conversation. Cheers, folks. And I will see you in the next episode.